good week to be Scott Secor, the defense, and just overall the Cardinals. Nine field goals for the Cardinals kicker, ten turnovers for the Cardinals defense, and most importantly, two victories. Welcome into Cardinal End Zone, everybody. I'm Joel Gadette. The head coach, Pete Lembo, joins us as always. It's always more fun when you come back with two wins. Absolutely, and uh, it's great to see how this team has continued to get better, continue to battle. Uh, a lot of close losses early in the season, and uh, they've stayed the course. Uh, they've gotten better in practice and uh, pulled off two pretty darn good wins here against two teams that are uh, heading towards bowl eligibility uh, at the top of the respective uh, divisions in the west and east side of the MAC. Uh, so it's good to see we still have some fight in us. Uh, a lot of football left to play. There's a lot of parity in the league. We certainly have our work cut out for us and a long way to go, but nice to see the guys getting some positive results. Yeah, first Central Michigan, which had just beaten Northern Illinois in DeKalb. Nobody had done that since 2009. And then Akron, who was the trendy pick and might still be to win the eastern half of the division or, or the eastern half of the conference. It was a tough stretch of, of two games, but you mentioned it, the, the resolve the guys have, the response that the guys have to come out and, and just kind of approach it like another day. Like anything that had happened before had happened, and we're just going to go out and play and and we've got a chance to win. You're right, Joel, and for a, a young, fairly inexperienced group that's still maturing and, and needs to keep maturing, it, it's good to see them understanding that and understanding that, you know, you got to put the record aside and put your best foot forward every Saturday or now as we get into midweek games. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday. Wednesday, you know, today's Sunday, even though it's Thursday, that, that type of thing. But uh, good signs and, uh, and also um, Jack Milas, uh, you know, three starts at this point, two wins, only one offensive turnover during that stretch. So those are some good indicators as well. Let's go to Mount Pleasant. This thing is a pretty big rivalry. These teams uh, don't like each other very much. Cardinals have won four consecutive prior to this game. And it was interesting, the start, you guys moved the ball pretty well, but Central helped. Three penalties for 38 yards against Central Michigan on this opening drive. Mixed in with the 15-yard catch by Corey LaCanaria and the 18-yard run, his longest of the game, for Jawan Edwards. It was a very productive, balanced offensive drive here to start the game. And you're absolutely right. Our guys kept their poise starting on the opening kickoff, and it paid off here as we got on the board. You guys are up 6-0 after that, missed extra points, so Central scores a touchdown, goes up 7-6, but you guys continue to punch right back, and the offense, uh, in Jack's first two starts, came out cooking the first couple of series, which is always good to see with a new young quarterback. Getting a lot of guys involved, there's freshman receiver Jordan Hogue from Fort Wayne, who's got a lot of promise. Okay, tell me what happened here. Yeah, Jack just <laughs> drops the snap, and then it becomes a scramble drill, and guys react nicely. Great run after the catch by Kevon Maybon, splitting the Central Michigan secondary for a score. The best was the spin move. The defender was left holding Kevon's hand warmer as Maybon ran for the end zone. Kick off, or, uh, the field goal for Scott Secor here puts Ball State up in front 16-7, to 39-yard field goal. You guys ran down the clock in the first quarter to take the wind in the start of the second quarter. Then Central Michigan driving into the wind. Coughs it up in the red zone. This is uh, the first of many turnovers for you guys in the game. Jack Milas comes out, turns it right back over, though. It was an interesting ebb and flow of how things work. It really was. You know, you try to take advantage of the turnover, come out throwing, and uh, Central Michigan had a very good defensive line, defeated our tight end and pass protection right there. Central Michigan converts the touchdown reception to the fullback Joe Bocci, and then leaping Kevon Maybon. Yeah, nice to see Kevon having a productive afternoon, real competitive, very passionate. Jordan Williams catch here. He only had four grabs, 26 yards, but his impact was greater. There were a couple PIs. Well, and that was for a first down, and that was the thing we were able to do is just keep moving the chains, get ourselves into some manageable third down situations. Here's a 37-yard field goal for Scott Secor. He would go four of four in this game. We will see the fourth in a little bit. And look at that wind, right? There's a 37-yard field goal that probably would have been good from 60. Mm, foreshadowing. You guys go back out on defense. The strip sack or sack fumble for Darnell Smith. Mike Ayers nearly gets the touchdown. Juwan Edwards does. Yeah, and here we go. Great field position. Doesn't get any better than that on the one-yard line. More turnovers for you guys as we go into the second half. We're late in the third quarter. Four and a half minutes to go. Eric Patterson, Titus Davis had a battle, and EP wins this one. He did, and Titus Davis is a heck of a receiver. Had a good afternoon. Eric picks this one off and does a great job of getting to the sideline, and you see all the other 
defenders becoming blockers, escorting him down the sideline. Next offensive possession to follow off of this, Corey Lacanaria, you get the freshman involved, and then this is on fourth down and five to Mabon. Well, we're going into the wind, so we're not quite in field goal range. It becomes four down territory. Great execution there by Jack Milas and the release by Kevon Mabon to get himself open on the slant route. Ten yard rush for Juwan Edwards here, put him over 88 for the game. That's what he needed to pass Marcus Merriweather, becomes Ball State's all-time leading rusher, more than 4,000 yards. It sets up another Scott Secor field goal, that one from 20. And now we go to the fourth quarter where things get interesting. Thomas Rawls gets into the red zone, another fumble. That's great football, helmet to ball, pop the thing out. Yep, Eric Patterson there forcing the ball, Sean uh, Wiggins jumping on it. And here's another stop. Aaron Taylor spills the fullback. Diedrich Cromartie comes up with a big tackle. That last one was a fourth down stop. So back to back red zone trip. Central gets nothing. They do get the touchdown, though, to Titus Davis. That ties the game with 2.22 left. And you guys go into two minute offense. Yeah, here we go. A mix of throws down the field. Here's a screen to Juwan Edwards. And nice to see us moving the ball very efficiently here. Kevon Mabon on a slant again, and this effectively gets us into field goal range. Scott Secor, 55 with the wind. It didn't look pretty, but it looks good. And you guys get out of Mount Pleasant with a W. Yeah, it was a, it was a great win over a very good team. Like you mentioned earlier, big rivalry game for us. And uh, the other part that you don't see there is we came out, we had a good kickoff and we finished our final plays, our victory plays on defense effectively. Let's take a look at the spotlight players for this one, and we start on the offensive side. We mentioned briefly Juwan Edwards. Quick pass is Marcus Merriweather, 4,013 yards at the end of the game. He is now Ball State's all-time leading rusher. Speaks volumes of what he's been able to do in four years. And hard-fought yards up in Mount Pleasant against a very good defense, the number one ranked defense in our conference. Uh, some safeties and linebackers that were excellent tacklers. On the defensive side, Eric Patterson had one heck of a day for the Cardinals. He winds up with two interceptions. He had a pick to end the game. We didn't see that one. Also the 10 tackles. He breaks up uh, two passes. He forces the fumble and is the Mac West Defensive Player of the Week and was also the Jim Thorpe National Defensive Back of the Week. And then our special teams spotlight is Scott Secor. Four of four on field goals. The biggest one was that 55-yarder to win it. He, of course, was the Mac West Division Special Teams Player of the Week as well. Good win. It was a good win and a needed win. Uh, very proud of the guys and how resilient they've been. The night before the game, as we're staying up in the, the Darty Hotel, which is this classic place that I think Al Capone stayed yeah. at in the 20s, uh, telling the guys, look, you're doing all the right things. Here's the signs that I'm seeing that are all very healthy, very positive, and you just got to stay the course and it's going to pay off. And sure enough, it did on Saturday. No rest for the weary, though. Let's go to the Akron Zips. This team comes in having already beaten an ACC opponent in Pittsburgh. They come to your house, though, and uh, they certainly took the bull by the horns in the first quarter, but great response by your guys. They did, and this is a very talented football team, a, a hot team, a team that started to get some momentum at the end of last year with a win over Toledo to finish their season. So we knew we would have our hands full, and it, it started with their explosive offense and a spread throwing team, but they had a great defensive line that had 21 sacks, uh, was giving up very few rushing yards, good athletes on special teams. So this was clearly going to be a day where all three phases were going to have to chip in for us to get a win. Game plan facing a team like that that's got such a great defense makes you mind your P's and Q's on offense. But we start with Akron's offense. Well, let's start with Ball State's offense, actually, because you guys came out against that great defense, and Jack Milas was unfazed. He was 3-for-3 three three passing on this first drive, 17 yards to Jordan Williams, 17 yards on the little screen pass, or the, uh, the wheel route, rather, to Juwan Edwards. This gets you down into field goal range. Scott Secor buries a 46-yarder. You take that early lead, you're up 3-0, but then we mentioned Akron came back out, and Tommy Woodson, a redshirt freshman, did a tremendous job leading his unit. He did. He made some great throws early, and uh, here's one uh, for a touchdown in between two defenders. Earlier, he laced one down a seam where Tyree Holder had pretty good coverage, but it was still a big game. 7-3 Akron after that. Now 14-3 Akron after Connor Hundley runs for his second touchdown of the season. That's the score after one. We go to the second. You get the freshman involved. We mentioned Hogan Lacanaria against Central. Here's Lacanaria again. Really good hands for a rookie. It is. Low and away, that's where you want to throw that ball, but you got to catch it, and certainly Lacanaria did. John Edwards, these were man yards in this game. 24 carries, 121 yards, second most against this Akron defense. 
sets up another field goal. What you have to keep note of is Akron's red zone defense is ninth best in the country. And they proved it. We had to settle for a lot of field goals down in close throughout the afternoon. Another touchdown for Connor Hundley puts Akron up 21-6 at this point, but Eric Patterson with a good kickoff return late in the first half. That sets up a beautiful pass to Jordan Williams. Well, this was great uh, ad lib here. Uh, Jordan ends up taking a, an out route and, and pushing it up the field, gets us down in the red zone, and here's the reverse play we had worked on all week. And you really felt like, even though we were behind at the half, Joel, we started stemming the tide quite a bit in the second quarter. 21-13 at the break there, and then you go to the second half, and turnover city, Ben Engel, that's a heck of a play. It was. This was a run-throw option. Probably should have been handed off. They decided to throw it. We had our linebackers in place. A great savvy play by Ben. A little dump off to Juwan Edwards. He's been great in the pass game for you guys, too, uh, which is a nice added element. Sets up another field goal. One of the things our offense has been able to do the last three or four weeks is get our screen game going, and that's what one of the screens that you saw right there to Edwards. There's the wham package with Cody Grice. He actually fumbles that one, but they bring in the nose tackle to pick up first downs. He was great at it, but later in the drive, Aaron Taylor's great at that. Yeah, big sack there by Aaron comes through unblocked. Got to be careful about how high you're hitting the quarterback. Zach Ryan, another turnover. Good day to be a linebacker. Taylor a sack, Ingle a pick, Ryan a pick, has no cast on his hand anymore. Well, that helped, and we dropped a lot of guys into coverage there, and that was an underthrown ball. But you're right, if he's got a cast on his arm, there's no way he's picking that off. Scott Secor, another field goal. You guys continue to claw back. It's 21-19 after that 37-yarder, and then more turnovers. Here's a muffed punt. Right place, right time, Quentin Cooper. Yeah, it's hard to catch punts going laterally because you can't keep your body in front of the ball. So that was probably one that Akron returner should have let go. Find Dylan Curry down the seam. That gets you close to the end zone. And then Jack Milas fights Juwan Edwards on the read option. He gets the touchdown. Well, the zone read play was very effective against an athletic Akron defensive line. We're going to break this down a little more later, but the punt block, Teddy Williamson. Yeah, great job of just extending his hands at the last step there not jumping, not raising your hands up. Uh, perfect technique there by Teddy taking the ball off the foot. You guys are up 26-21. You were finally able to punch through with that last Milas touchdown. This one provides a little bit of cushion. Eighth touchdown of the season for Juwan Edwards. And a screen earlier to Jordan Williams uh, that was good to see going. Again, we mentioned the screens were a big part of this plan. You had gone for two, so you're up 32-21, and then Tyree Holder. This really helped seal it for you. This was his second pick, first was called back. He had a touchdown on that one too. He stepped out of bounds on that return, so you got a field goal out of it, but a good day for Tyree. It was, and first of all, you'd like to see him not <laughs> step out of bounds. He looked fast running, got to do a little bit better job of uh, planting in bounds there, getting us all the way to the end zone. We end up settling for a field goal. We had a couple negative plays on offense, but at that point, it was just a nice cushion being up 11. Uh, great to see how our guys focused and played with such intensity uh, and detail in the second half. And again, uh, a younger team, a lot of guys like Tyree Holder that are growing into much bigger roles, but you're starting to see some more productivity out of them. You're starting to see all the hard work paying off and uh, a good win over a good football team. 35-21, the final score as the Cards take down Akron. Our spotlights for the week, more Juwan Edwards on offense. 24 for 121. Only Marshall had a running back go over 121 yards against Akron this year, and Marshall is undefeated. Quake uh, with a, a pretty unprecedented day against the Zips. On the defensive side, Ben Engel had five tackles. We saw the pass breakup and the interception. Same play, which is savvy. And then on the special team side of things, Scott Secor goes five of seven kicking field goals, but we give the nod to Teddy Williamson with the blocked punt, also recovered that ball, and uh, then actually had some action for you guys as the running back as well. From there, we have Jack Milas post game. We have Zach Ryan post game. Let's go talk to those guys. I just got to trust it and just trust the guys around me. I think that's the biggest thing. Just once you start hesitating, then things can go you know, very wrong. And I just get back there and I just, you know, see it and you got to throw it. You can't hesitate and you just got to trust yourself. You got to trust your teammates. You know, offensive line did great today. We start off slow, we get a rhythm going, and then we actually start playing really hard. Um, that's something we can, that we really have to work on, though, is coming out in the first half and playing like we did in the second half, and that can really change the game. These uh, past two weeks, you know, we really, like, are focused on our assignments, you know, really playing hard in the second half, and we just got to do that in the first half. 
you said post game, uh, don't put a fork in us yet. You, you got to grab your shovels and keep digging because you're in a hole, but guys are doing a pretty good job of digging. Absolutely, and we've got some really big challenges uh, coming up, starting with Northern Illinois next week. But uh, the key is taking it one day at a time, and these guys focusing on getting better every day, uh, becoming more detailed, uh, more consistent. And uh, you look out there and you see one senior on offense, you see three on defense. Um, it, it's a challenge to be patient sometimes as a coach, as a player, as a, as a fan, as a person uh, on our faculty or staff. Um, but it's nice to see some progress and uh, we just need to keep forging ahead here in the, the last third of the season. Now we go to Jawan Edwards, and uh, certainly we mentioned him passing Marcus Merriweather as the greatest running back yards-wise in Ball State history. He broke that record, by the way, 75 carries short of what Merriweather had in his career. Jawan is also currently the second leading career rusher in FBS football. Only Amir Abdullah at Nebraska has more yards. So it's been quite a career for uh, Jawan Edwards, which is remarkable considering Ball State was his only FBS offer. We had a chance to go one-on-one -on -one with Quake yesterday and talk about his success here, the success of the team, and what lies ahead with four and hopefully five more games in his Ball State career. Jamal, we'll talk about uh, the greater season at this point uh, going forward, but I want to start with you. Let's talk about the record. Uh, I, I know it's about team accomplishment, but is it cool to take a step back and realize nobody here has ever run for more yards? Uh, definitely is. It's, it's good to know that I made history. Um, it's good to know that um, it's not, that wasn't given to me. I earned that all the way with my teammates and um, just to trust through all my coaches. How much do you think about something like that afterward? Do you, do you take a step back and when does it hit you? Uh, um, it probably won't hit me, hit me till I leave and I, I see that I left my mark or I left the legacy here at Ball State. Um, it's, just, it's just a good feeling, man, just to know that I, I was almost not able to play D1 football. So just to be here and break the record, just, just, just to show a lot about me and my kick. Let's go to that point. Four years ago, Ball State's your only offer. And even once you get to Ball State, did you ever think 4,000 yards would be a possibility? And 40, 40 <laughs> some odd, maybe 50 touchdowns. Yeah, uh, not at all. Um, Cause you gotta know what type of person you are. And I'm not, you know, I'm not the guy that's gonna take it 100 yards. So 4,000 yards is a lot to me. Uh, you know, five yard average. I, I was looking at the film the other day and I was just thinking like, I would get up to 4,000 yards, and uh, I just thank my O-line, man, and, and, and the wide receivers who all blocked for me. Whoever had anything to do with me getting this record, I just appreciate them. Yeah. Yeoman's work for you guys, uh, and especially the blockers, especially the last couple of weeks. Let's yeah. talk about the last few games. Mm -hmm. It's been hard-fought yards for you. Definitely. Uh, walk me through your last couple of weeks. Um, Central Michigan, I knew coming to the game uh, that uh, – the record was on the line. Um, I knew how close I was to it. I didn't know when I broke it during the game, but after the game, somebody told me I broke it. But I was so happy that we actually won the game that I wasn't really thinking about it. But once I heard that, you know, that was another uh, so another thing I could smile about. Um, and in this past game, uh, quarterback doing a tremendous job. Um, offensive line is blocking great, and the defense is playing tremendously well, uh, tremendously well. And uh, the coaches just keep battling with us, keep focusing on the things, keep telling us to get more detailed, and um, um, the captains are leading in the right way. You got four games left, um, maybe five games left. How much are you going to treasure this home stretch here at Ball State? <sighs> I think about that every day, man. I just think about these four games left and um, just trying to keep motivating these guys to let them know that uh, the season's not over. We can finish strong just to finish strong, man. And um, just to keep competing and, and play 60 minutes and fight through every game up or down, you know, so uh, the outcome uh, 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 serves itself. Most important thing, and this is non-football related also, I know you're really proud of what you've been able to do here, what the mm -hmm. team has been able to do, mm -hmm. but I know you're really proud of what you've been able to do here at Ball State as well. Yep. Being a student, you're graduating in December, right? Yep. What's that no, like? No, I'll actually be, I'll actually be done taking classes in December. I have an internship, uh, which I have to do for my sports ed major, and I'm going to try to do that through uh, training. Um, and while training, I'm going to try to do my internship at the facility um, just because of my sports ed major. How do you feel about being done with college? Um, it feels great. Um, you know, without football, if I, wouldn't, if I wouldn't play football, I would have never thought about coming to college in my eyes. You know, school wasn't a big, you know, thing to me. Um, but I know in order to, to play football, I had to do the academic part. So I, I put that first and I've just been trying to maintain, you know, success in the classroom so I'll never have to face the ineligible. 
Quick, glad it worked out, glad you're here, and uh, glad you've had a great career. Yes, sir. Another segment of X's and O's this week. Pete, but before we get to that real quick, you hear Juwan uh, not graduating at the end of December, still has his internship, but uh, I know he's still uh, really proud of uh, being able to be done with classes and, and get through four years of football and, and have the accolades he has had as an individual and as a team in his time here. There's no question. He's done a great job of balancing everything, including being one of the most visible students on campus and all the things that go along with that. Uh, outside of what he does academically and on the field. Uh, but he has been very conscientious about staying on track to graduate. And he has been a better student here than he was in high school. And it's really been neat to see that become such an important part of his growth and development. Yeah, Quake has had a 3.2 in his time here in Muncie as well. Let's take a look at uh, one of his backups this year, a guy that's going to be looked at to replace him big time next year as a running back. This year it's more on special teams. Teddy Williamson uh, had one heck of a punt block against Akron. He did, and, and there's very few things that happen in a game that are more satisfying than blocking a punt. And in this particular case, we went into the game thinking, go after it, try to rush the punter's operation. A very good punter for Akron. Uh, but what was most satisfying about this was Teddy talking to Coach Lustig on the sideline, trying to make some adjustments as the game went on. And then in the second half, all of it comes to fruition huge play, huge momentum changer in the game, really propelling us to a win. Uh, and special teams has been such an important part of what we've done as a program for the last three years. This is the type of productivity that we love to see. Let's take a look at it. What worked on this particular play and, and how did Teddy get through and, and what did he see that he was talking to Coach Lustig about? Well, the first thing you're going to see here is that we've got a bunch of guys up in a rush look down in three-point stances, ready to get a great takeoff. We've already rushed a couple Akron punts so far in this game. So they've actually brought another uh, guy who typically covers down the field, what we would call a gunner, into the backside of the protection down here to block David Moore down at the bottom of the screen. But the other key to this whole operation is that they're in a two up back look, and we'll see it here uh, from the tight angle in a second. When you have two up backs in the backfield, you have an additional gunner to cover down the field, and it lessens up your protection to the strong side, the front side of that punt. All right, there's Teddy taking it right off the foot. Okay, one of the things we tell our guys is scoop and score on a punt behind the line of scrimmage. Now that one's obviously bouncing out of bounds and uh, you're trying to maximize your yardage. In this play, we're gonna get the ball one way or the other <laughs> yeah. unless an Akron player were to pick it up and run it all the way for a first down. So you tell your guys, go ahead and scoop and score. But let's look at it from the tight shot here, Joel. See our guys getting real excited there on a huge momentum change in the game. But let's look at it from this angle. So again, four blockers on the left side. That's going to negate David Moore coming off the backside. But here's Teddy on the front side of this thing along with Darian Green. And you're going to see these two upbacks try to block uh, both front side rushers. Teddy does what we call an up and under move where he's going to come underneath the upback and make that up back miss the block. And they're a nice job of taking it right off the foot of the punter. The other thing you're going to see here, Joel, if I can get this to play one more time, is that the snap takes the punter off the block point. And sometimes it's a combination of a good rush, but also a poor operation. Watch the snap pull the punter over here to the left of the screen. And that tenth of a second, is just enough to give Teddy time to block that punt. Huge play in the game. Great to see the guys get excited. That's how to block a punt, so now you can go home and uh, design that on Madden, if you're curious. But uh, good to see that work for the Cardinals. It'll be interesting to see if uh, you guys can pull that off against Northern Illinois. Let's take a look at the opponent coming up uh, this week as well, and it's a much different looking NIU team than in years past. Pete's so much different, but oh, still so much the same. They don't have Jordan Lynch anymore, but this Drew Hare guy is pretty good. Oh, he's very good. You're watching him here in the first <laughs> series against Eastern Michigan on the gray field last week, running a 78-yard touchdown on a quarterback draw. He's a very good athlete. Um, he's not quite Jordan Lynch from an experience standpoint, but gosh, he doesn't look a whole lot different. Yeah, but Jordan Lynch wasn't Chandler Harnish, and that worked out quite well, so we'll see what is in store 
for Drew Hare in the offense. He's got 11 touchdowns passing, one interception, and then, of course, good on the uh, run game as well. But so is Cam Stingley and Joel Buonio. They've got two really good running backs. A little bit different without Tommy Lee Lewis, but they're still so explosive. Dayron Brown, you see Juwan Breskison. So many weapons. Yeah, this is a team that's averaging 464 yards of total offense, well over 30 points, 53% on third down, which is one of the best in the country. Defensively, they rotate a lot of players through. They still have a lot of good athletes on defense and special teams. Uh, this is a program that's pretty much recession-proof, Joel. Um, it, it, a down year for them is still going to be a tremendous year uh, for most programs in America. So we got a big challenge coming in on Wednesday night. And it's midweek action. That time of year rolls around. That's always fun. It's exciting. It's exciting to be a part of this league. It's one of the reasons why you come to this league as a coach or as a student athlete uh, to be the only show in town in the middle of the week. Uh, we were on ESPN2 against Iowa early in the year on a Saturday, and now we're on on a Wednesday night. It's awesome. It'll be the Cardinals in Northern Illinois Wednesday at Schumann Stadium. Midweek action. We'll break it all down in two weeks here.